finally welcome back to the J Loco model room because guess where I was yesterday? That's right, Warley's new reinvented show at Stepfold Barn Railway uh, near Tamworth in Staffordshire. Um, as you know, Warley always used to be at the NEC and this year they took the decision to sort of end the NEC show and fortunately came up with a brilliant concept and idea of partnering, partnering, shall we say, up with Stepfold Barn Railway um, near Tamworth, as I say. And so I decided to go along yesterday and have a look, see how it compared to previous Warley shows. And I have to be honest, I absolutely loved it. I thought, for me personally, it was better than the NEC, far better. Um, the exhibitions were split. Um, I, say, I did see a lot of you there, shall I say, actually. Um, thank you all who stopped, said hello, had a chat and uh, asked me how I've been on here. <laughs> um, but where am I going with this? So I think over the last few months I've been busy. I've been out sort of chasing the real thing, visiting Heritage Railways, and I kind of lost sort of thoughts, kind of not having much time. I was kind of lacking a bit of motivation, a bit of inspiration for getting into here to squeeze it in. And then the longer I left it, the worse it got, and the more I was like, yeah, I have nothing to go in there, I haven't got the time, and I was finding excuses. <laughs> but obviously, when I saw Wally was on, um, I thought to myself, no, I'm going to go and then just see how I feel, sort of, you know, with regards to thoughts of the railway, perhaps get some inspiration, some motivation, some ideas of some of the guys, and I certainly did. Um, so as I was saying, the reason why I personally found it better was it was split. Obviously those who were familiar with Stepfall Barn Railway, I'd only actually been there for the first time this year in June, I think it was. So if you are familiar with it, and if you're not, I'll briefly try and describe. There's various sort of sections throughout like the area of the country park, um, one of which obviously has their railway, um, their narrow gauge. Um, one has a little tiny trains railway, which is the Mies Valley Light Railway, which is a must-see as well. Um, they have their own little, obviously, circuit that leads towards where the Oak Tree Halt is. And they've got a roundhouse with, obviously, a lot of their displays, like the museum. Um, They've got great catering facilities, in my opinion. They have like bars, if you want that kind of thing, a diner. Uh, and obviously, because it was an event, yes, they had different sort of outdoor kind of features as well, where you could get like burgers, that kind of stuff, or drinks, teas, coffees, you know, snacks. Um, and so they've got like the roundhouse area, they've got like the museum area, they've got like their sort of what's known as um, Strawberry Fields, and there's like a building there, and they've got um, what they normally have as a roller disco, and that's where the main exhibition hall was. So, um, so you obviously have to walk between each part, which isn't far to go, it's all flat and it's all very pleasant, like between the roundhouse area and where they got the Strawberry Fields building and the roller disco building, um, they got like traction engines sort of fired up, so, yeah, there was something always happening. I would say you got the tiny trains whizzing around outside and there was just something for everybody. Um, and obviously they got the narrow gauge just constantly running back and forth. They had you know, four or five engines running as well. So, you know, you didn't have to wait long if you did a haul and then you thought, oh, actually we'll have a train ride. You know, literally went outside within a few minutes it was there. So that was just fabulous. And to me, I just found it so much more relaxing, easier to get around every layout. I think no matter when, there's a lot of people there, don't get me wrong, but you could always find the space at a layout when you wanted to. Um, there were sales stalls where again, you can get to look at the stuff without being, dare I say, whacked out the way of a backpack. <laughs> it seemed to happen frequently too at the NEC. Um, it was just nice and pleasant and just a nice atmosphere. And as I say, you could do a haul 
then you could have a train ride or you could go grab something to eat um, then you could go and do another haul then you could again have a train ride or perhaps have a look around the roundhouse area at the static displays um, it was just pleasant it was really pleasant and I'm pleased to say next year they're back again if you can see that same weekend so save the date if you're interested can you see that? yeah so I think it's yes 11th and 12th there we go so yeah I can highly recommend it if you didn't go this year or you're thinking about it I just think it's so much nicer in these big venues so there was just as much there where it felt like there was um, all of obviously the warning lights that you're familiar with and as I say there were sales stalls like some Backman, Pekka yeah they were all there so well worth it I thought so yes so what I did find by going was I did get a little bit of motivation and I got quite a lot of inspiration. I had quite a few interesting chats with various members of Wally, which thank you guys. Um, I don't know if you're watching or not, but one in particular um, who was talking old gauge to me and he got the simplest of layouts. I'm just trying to grab some and if that shows there to there. And it was just like a display board almost and it was like very basic here, like just a track on a board and then pieces cut to show you how you could do it and you know where the points kind of joined here and then you've got this end decorated it like landscaped and whatever to show you well you know you could just keep it basic you could you know make it look pretty um but he was like saying to me all you need you know initially when i was like saying i've got these locals or i've not actually done anything still with them he said you could just get a shunting strip and then if you wanted you could build onto it just keep extending if you did it by a board so which is a good idea. I'm, I'm actually really encouraged by that and I think that's what I'm going to do initially, um, which I've kind of been looking today and I think I have a space in the garage where I can do that. So I can like clear a few areas and I can at least have two boards. Okay, I've got some spare from when this was done. About three, maybe four, or well, one's not quite the full size, but that would be enough. So I think two of those, which these are quite big. I mean, that's one there. So even one and a half, I think, initially. I don't know. One and the one that's cut down, perhaps. So that's what I'm looking at doing. So, because I'm very keen. I, I absolutely love the old gauge layouts yesterday. I seem drawn to them somehow. And I'm, I don't know. I know. <laughs> like I was say, I haven't been in here for months. I haven't touched anything. Nothing has changed, as you'll notice. But I was quite inspired to start fiddling, creating a little old gauge diorama. And what I'm thinking is, I'm not going to actually base it on anything other than <laughs> my mind's working, you know. So, whereas this was North Yorkshire Moors kind of tribute to, I'm just thinking the old gauge will be just whatever comes into my kind of fantasy, really. I don't know, like, I'm, I'm thinking I, I'd like to incorporate a little bit of water on there. I'm thinking perhaps canal, perhaps like grotty warehouse area. I, I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. And hmm, perhaps a bar <laughs> to put on the end. So I don't know. So I'm thinking if I don't actually base it on anything, then kind of, you know, it leaves it wide open for me to just decide what I want to do. And so that's, that's sort of what I'm thinking. And again, I didn't get his name, but a massive thank you. If you're watching, you'll know who you are. Um, I did put you on Instagram a clip of you as I said I was going to do um, when you talk to another guy about sort of the same kind of stuff. So yeah, get, definitely kind of brought some, I, th I think motivation's a word, it's definitely brought it back and definitely given me something to do but I'm very conscious, I've got a lot of exciting ideas about these old gauge thoughts that <laughs> I'll probably now go to neglect this again while I do that, but at least I'm doing something modelling, which I think I am keen to get back to doing. So I think I've left it for too long. And when I saw, I mean, there were some fantastic layouts there. I don't know if any of you guys watching were there, but, uh, you know, uh, there were some absolutely amazing ones. And one particularly, I think it was Abby something, I'll have to check later, Abby... Oh, it's gone. From me. But anyway, the, the septic, the landscape in the tree area, and they got like a little hole with a little rat that <laughs> shot out and went back in and by a fisherman. It was just fantastic, the detail and the thought that had gone into it. 
There's also another interesting one where they used sort of a screen and was doing constant like season changes, weather changes on it. I think that was called Brook End, maybe, or no, Bond End. Um, that was interesting as well, like just to show you ideas for backdrops you could do if you wanted. So, yeah, lots of ideas, which I think it was more to me what model shows should be about. I almost feel NEC and, dare I say, Gets at Milton Keynes. I didn't want to go there this year. It's almost become a bit too sales driven, which I, I understand, you know, the, the industry, they want to push the sales and what's out there and that. But for me, what I loved yesterday was to actually see what people have created. It's more sort of, it's still encouraging sales in a way without it just being sales tools, sales tools, sales tools, you know, <laughs> because seeing all the different dioramas and seeing what people have done and the imaginations they've got and what they've come up with you know it gives you inspiration to do it and then you're naturally going to need to buy stuff anyway so then to me the sales come naturally so i found it far more perhaps inspirational than just looking at a sales tool if i'm honest even though there were lots of sales tools there too and i did buy a couple of things one bean just here <laughs> which i'll put it that way man you see there? Oh, camping coach. I had that from the, I think it's the Deltic Preservation Society stall. And what I'm thinking with this is either the Levisham area or some further down here at Gofland. Obviously, those who know, the North Yorkshire Moors have got a couple of these you can hire out as holiday um, in the said locations just mentioned. So I thought, perfect. I just liked it and I liked so I haven't taken out the box yet, as you can see, like the fencing around and that. I just thought that, that could work nice. You know, it's not 100% accurate, but I don't care, I liked it, so. And I thought I could make that work. And the other thing I got, which I'll show you in a moment, it's that just syntax, can you see it there? It's actually the, the flying pig, as it's affectionately known. Um, the old Sun Valley logo, which sadly is out of service now, and no kind of date or idea on when or if it will ever get overhauled sadly but it's a local I've always kind of liked and I love the valley so when I saw this um Bomber County Models I think that was um so yeah that was a good good pickup too so I'll show you that in a moment as well perhaps I'll give it a run tag it on I know I know there's a few of you there who was like, oh, I want to see running trains. <laughs> so I'll give it a run round and show you so you've got the best of both worlds. But I do feel because I've been away so long, um, and obviously because of yesterday, there's a lot of talking going on here and it's quite a long video. But I just wanted to share sort of where my mindset's been at really and also like what, what Wally at Stratford was like. So hopefully this has given you a good idea of that. And also what to expect coming up. Um, well, I do want to, I do honestly want to start landscaping. I know I've said this for how long now, every time I make a video, but I do feel I've got so many trees, plants, flowers, you know, all in boxes that I really want to make a move and perhaps do some more work this end as well. Um, but as I say, I'm very keen to have a dig in the shed, which is where I think I put those spare boards. And I want to start thinking about what I can do with that Peko track I've got. And sort of what kind of idea. I, I've already kind of, like as I say, sussed out perhaps if it's garage wise. I know what sort of space I'm dealing with. Um, I've got some like <laughs> spare appliances out there. I'm actually going to give a bit <laughs> so I can make more room, we'll see. So that's what's hopefully coming up over the winter. Um, I have, as always, got quite a busy time coming up though. Um, a visit to a new tiny trains railway, which I might put some shorts on here, because that's all I've seem to be putting on at the moment, as you'll notice, um, at Raven Glass. And November, yeah, main line, back on the main line. Uh, the vintage trains and railway touring so I've got I think it's Blackpool and Edinburgh coming up and the weekend in York so I know there's a lot of changes not necessarily 
I won't say improvements, I'll say changes at the uh, Whale Museum in York. So I'm going to go and have a look there as well, my spare day I've got whilst I'm up that way. And we'll see. Well, up that way, across that way, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Jeez, no. um, yeah, there, I'm there for the weekend, but because my rail tour goes out of there. <laughs> so, um, so I think well, I'll make, make a bit of a break of it as it's a nice time of the year. So. So that's what's all coming up next. So um, even though I've had a lot of you messaging on Instagram saying, oh, it's a winter season, you know, you can get back in the model room. It doesn't necessarily mean it's quiet for me with visits and tours and whatever. So um, yes, so I think that is it. I'll run the pig briefly, tack it on the end, and then hopefully I'll be back very soon. <laughs> so thank you guys. And thank you for all the messages. And thank you for those who reach out on Instagram. Oh, and yeah, I have kind of, I will say kind of, kind of appeared on Facebook. I have had um, a problem with somebody out there in the world creating a profile, calling themselves me and stealing photographs off my Instagram page. So, and to try and get it dealt with by Meta, I've had to create a Facebook page. So if you see... Um, we are there with the same profile as the Instagram picture and Eric Tracy, obviously, as the background. That is the me. But if you see one where I'm wearing pink trousers in both the photos, that's not me. So please don't message or interact because it's clearly a scam artist. So, so sadly, it seems to be taking a while for it to be dealt with. But So yeah, I'm just worried in case they reach out and message anybody or somebody messages them. It's not me. And don't interact would be my advice so so yes if you see the other one on facebook where um eric tracy is the background that is me <laughs> so and you'll see i've put a post saying this is from the real j lego instagram so it's a mad world i think i don't know when you start to get impersonated or copied it's uh, i'm not sure what that says whether it's a good or a bad thing i think it's probably bad so so yeah just i always say Stay safe out there guys, and particularly online, and if anybody asks you for anything, it's always a no. Don't trust it. <laughs> so, anyway, I digress. So, hope you all have a good week ahead, and I've dropped the clicker on the floor. Hang on, gosh. I'm going to have to quickly end the night time. Here we go. <laughs> Professional as ever. <laughs> See, some things definitely don't change, and that's me and my lack of professional videos. <laughs> So thank you for bearing with me and as I say it's a bit waffly but hopefully you've enjoyed listening to all about that. So have a good week and I'll catch you soon. So there goes the flying pig. Literally flying. <laughs> it's beautiful. my uh, little freight wagons on there, including one of my banana buns. <laughs> you know, I like those. <laughs> Probably a good runner. I'm very pleased with it. Nice little local. And you may have noticed when I started up these stuff here, my beautiful renumbered nail peg engine. You can see we've got 62005 there, 65894, and 63395. Oh, here comes the page. So yeah, they've all been renumbered and kind of real tall and stuff I've done to them. Nice shit plate on there, nice nail pick plate. So, yeah, sad news. I meant to say as well, sad news about Grimy Times closing, although he's carrying on weathering, obviously, once the shop closes. Um, so, he's, he's been very busy 
recently um, doing a lot of renumbering, um, a lot of fives, which I will show in my next video actually, because stuff has been happening obviously whilst I've been away from YouTube. <laughs> Um, let's watch the pig go again. So yeah, so there is stuff to actually film and show you, like locos I've had changed. You know. So there you go. I bring to you the flying pig. So if I just... Uh, Actually, we speed him up a little bit, bring him back round to the station, and then I'll, I'll stop him. There we go. So, there we are. Quite a good little purchase, I think. So again, thank you for watching, guys. And that's all for now. It's long enough, I think, if you're all still awake. So, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.